just made three thousand dollars working from home part time. So I sent back doing what? <laughs> I mean, what? What is she doing? She just working part time from home. So then she sent her number. I contacted her, and I'm gonna be honest with you. Like most people, I was very leery because you've seen the commercials on TV. Me being a larger woman, I I purchased those products, so I'm thinking, oh, this is not going to work. And I was really looking at it as I'm, I'm going to be selling, I didn't even think of the word farm, and I'm thinking I'm going to be selling girdles. This is not going to work. Then Nicole kept posting all this stuff about, oh, these people making money. Then she posted a little information that her first check was, I think, 500 bucks. And I'm like, huh? like a thousand. I'm like, okay, that's pretty good. And then she said, well, we're coming to Memphis. I said, well, you know, yeah, I'll go ahead and do a showcase because number one, for me, I've done the research, gone on the website, and I knew I wanted the garment. If the garment worked, I knew I wanted the garment. And Nicole was saying, well, Sam, you need to be a business builder because you're a business woman, you're an entrepreneur. And I said, well, you know, if I get one garment, I you know, with my size, I know I'm going to wear more than once a week, so I need another one. So, it wasn't any cost to get into the business. You just had to buy the products, spend, you know, spend the minimum amount buying the products. So, I brought the products, got everything to the house, sitting on the living room table, just set the box there. Then, Nicole started sending out some more Facebook messages. <laughs> Talk about how much money she made. Well, then she sent out an email to everyone that was in her downline with a copy of her $12,800 check on it. And I was like, call, I was like, uh, Nicole, I'm ready. <laughs> I was like, I just, I'm going on the website, I'm ordering those t shirts, those business contracts. <laughs> She was ready. I was like, where y'all gonna be? She's like, we're gonna be at the mall. I'm gonna be there Friday. I'm gonna be at the mall Friday too. <laughs> so that was a big motivating factor for me. And then a lot of you in this room are entrepreneurs, your business owners. I mean, we've tried it all from real estate. When the real estate markets go down, you know, we easily put on another hat, change hats. But I am here to tell you this thing is working. And I'll let Nicole tell you about her last check because that really puts Mark under my feet. I was calling Marlene and I was like, Marlene, I've been telling you that this girl is making some money. <laughs> <laughs> and this is something that we can reach out and touch, but I can say this is a profitable business and it sells itself. Amen, Sam. Right. Y'all know I was calling saying like, what's up, girl? What you going to go? Oh, Nicole, I, I got so much stuff going on. So it's, it feels really good to have her sitting here. But just like she's telling you, how many of you guys are in real estate? I saw your real estate sign. Mm -hmm. Oh, my fellow, oh, I just want to give y'all a hug. <laughs> I just left Delaware, and uh, I actually met another woman on Facebook who was a realtor. And she, first thing she called me, and we talked about 15 minutes, and she said, you know what, Nicole, for some reason I feel like I can trust you. She said, I'm so tired of driving around and showing people houses, I'm going to go for this. Long story short, I signed her up, and now it's an old squad of realtors, realtors in Delaware on fire, and I just got back yesterday from spending time with them, but my story is this. I'm a realtor. I was a realtor at heart. I loved the industry. I loved it in 2005. I mean, who was it? Were y'all in 2005? <laughs> 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 Long story short, I was in real estate. I was in Florida. Now, y'all know Florida was one of the top five, right? <laughs> Next to Arizona and Vegas. And uh, we did really well. And like I said, you didn't have to know what you were doing in 2005. We were making a killing. It was just it was unbelievable the kind of money we were making. But being in real estate, you know, you start seeing the investors getting these large checks. And you're thinking, gosh, I got to be smart. And I heard uh, Robert Kiyosaki say years ago, he said, the reason why they call you a real estate broker is because you're always broke and you're making someone else rich. And I remember I had this investor who he would always call me. And we did tons of deals together. And I would see him flipping these houses and get 50, 60, 70, 80 thousand dollar checks, and I'm excited just to get the closing check. And then I started thinking, you know what? I think I need to be an investor. Well, with my lack of knowledge, I ended up buying tons of property. I would get the pre-construction because in Florida, you know, at that time when you buy a pre-construction, by the time it's developed, you've got all this equity. You get to flip it. You get to make all this money. Bought all these properties. We were rehabbing properties. We were just dumping cash, thinking cha-ching, cha-ching. Every time I put a new tile down, that's money in the bank. Every time I do knock down the wall, 
Well, at the end of 2005, I think my largest month was the end of 2005. I made anywhere between thirty-five dollars to $40,000 in December 2005, right? I had like tons of closings. Well, I didn't have another closing for six months. And I had just bought this house. We had just closed on our house. We had just finished rehabbing the house in December. We had did all this stuff to our home, personal home. And we had a, a couple of reconstruction homes. We had some rental properties. I mean, we thought we were playing Monopoly. Well, long story short, didn't have a closing for six months. The overhead became larger than the income. We began scraping, trying to figure out, okay, what was going to be the next move to be able to generate an income. June came, July came, August came, and we were sitting in the bankruptcy court. And we ended up losing everything. We lost all our properties. We filed bankruptcy foreclosure, got stuff repossessed. And I tell people, you know, it's a trip because you think you've arrived and you've built up all this stuff, and then you see this transition happens in your life, and then everything is taken away from you. And it was so traumatic because the tow truck would be driving down our street, we'd be racing to the window trying to see if they come from our <laughs> <laughs> I mean, me and my husband, we'd be sitting at the kitchen table, we had like all these windows, and we would see a truck come, and we'd look at each other and break to the window. Because we didn't know if it was going to be our car that they were taking away. But what ended up happening is... Um, we lost everything and then found out we were pregnant. We were two months pregnant. We had nowhere to go. His mom had just lost his father. She was living with us, so she had to find where to go. I mean, everybody was just kind of hurt. So we had some friends that offered to take care of us in Atlanta, just put us up for a little while. And we went there and we stayed with them for like six months. And I was so embarrassed because you think you built up all this stuff. And now, I mean, you get to the lowest point of humility in your life where you have nothing like... I think we had $300 a month coming in. And um, <clears throat> what really killed me was when we had to go to the county building. And we sat in that county building. And, and, and I was crying because I looked at myself. I looked down. I had on some Chanel glasses. <laughs> I had on a funky velour sweatsuit. I had this purse on my arm that was a couple hundred dollars. And I'm thinking, I'm sitting here with a college degree. You know, I just had a successful career, and I'm literally in here because we need this money. We need food stamps. We need WIC. Like, we needed that health care. We were, we were basically at a point of the worst humility of our life. And so I just boo boo cried and, and went through a state of depression, and I was just like, Lord, how can we ever recover? And long story short, I mean, we began to search and sift and look for things and try to find a new gateway that would get us back on our feet. And I got into internet marketing, and, and I studied for about a year. A guy had asked me to write a book for him. He told me I'll pay you, so that helped to sustain us. My husband got a job finally, right two days before my daughter was born, and um, and, and we were able to get our first place like a month later. That first check was like, we out of here. I got to get out of this one bedroom. This one bedroom it was a small, little tight bedroom in their house with our baby, and we got our first apartment. We had no furniture. You know, everybody was donating stuff to us. But it was like the beginning of starting over. And my hope began to get restored again. And and somebody came in, like I said, he said, I'll take care of you, Nick. I'll just, you know, give you a couple hundred dollars a week, you help me write a book. And I spent like a year just researching, 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 trying to figure out what would be the next big opportunity for us to go into. Um, so after I got into internet marketing, I began to discover social media, the power of social media, but I also discovered direct sales. And a young lady called me one day, and she said, Nicole, I want you to check your email. So I checked my email, and it was a before and after picture of her. And I was like, Jim, what are, what are you doing? You know, this looks beautiful. She, she, explained, she said, girl, it's the body magic. So I was like, body magic? What's that? So she began to explain to me about the garment. Well, I have a mother that's like a size, she's between the 18 and 20. But my mother has gone from a size 6 to now, over the years, she's gained a lot of weight. What has happened as a result of that is she won't go anywhere. She's really dealing a lot with, you know, her self-esteem. And I didn't know this at the time, but she would go and buy all these clothes, and, and when she go to put them on, she'd look at the mirror, and she'd just say, I'm not 